Lord God Almighty is not clowning around. It's time to get serious of what he is saying to the earth. What is his message of Malachi 3.1? I am your God. You are my people. I have forgiven your iniquity, and I will never remember it again. This is the word of Jeremiah 31 that tears down in accordance with Jeremiah 110 and Haggai 2 2. So it's time to go ape over love and know that God is not clowning around. And yet, I'm recording videos to for people that have no interest in love and their versions of it are twisted. Behold, the Lord's arms are not too short to save. He has long arms. And in this hour, it is time to realize that this is love's time of his greatest power revealed. For he has deep adoration. His devotion unto us is extraordinarily much more deep than anyone has ever imagined because his law of love is those words that make all faith obsolete upon planet earth as it is written in Hebrews 8. And so in this hour it's time to realize that bowing down to what seems powerful is natural and bowing down to that which seems weak and worthless, that's great. That's devotion. That's why it's not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love that all things involving the kingdom age arising will come to pass. And so we have to realize that true devotion means dropping the dualities of like and dislike. Adoration is for all flesh. That is why the Lord has it written that he will pour out his spirit on all of us in Joel 2 and uh, Acts 2 because he has always been the Lord God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. And the real Christ is the good shepherd of all the flocks of man. And in this hour of the Lord's covenant being given to all mankind, he says, and I will write my law of love upon your hearts. Beyond that, no more will anyone ever even need to be taught of me, saith the Lord God, for all people of love shall know me if their love is moving forth as a little child. For those who love are born of me and know me because I am love. And so in this hour, it is time to realize that the Lord is moving mightily in this hour by a spirit of benevolence and the magnificence of his beneficence. And it's time to hear the little birdies and we have to realize that in order to succeed in our missions, we have to have, we must single-minded devotion. We must let that go out. And our devotion must be not only to our beloved love of the ages, who is the blessed, the beloved, and the adored, but our devotion has to come unto each other. For wide is the way unto hell with conditional love as we practice letting it become desensitized and and uh, wax cold as Christ said but in this hour narrow is the way to heaven with his unconditional love there are no conditions in his unconditional love and in this hour he says unto all people of his light of love if our light is on he, he says Blessings, honor, and glory shall go unto those beating their sword into the sickle to change their conditional love into unconditional love because the whole world is worshiping a false god. I am Elijah. Uh, they're worshiping a god of conditions 
and there have never been any conditions to his law. And so in this time, we need to realize that the price of success includes dedication, hard work, and unremitting devotion to the, to the uh, things that you don't want to see happening. We must learn the way of war no more, as Isaiah 2 and Micah 4 has foretold. This is the latter-day mountain from which all our shame and guilt shall be removed because of the sapphire sea, the bottomless ocean of his adoration and devotion unto us. And so in this hour, he is wanting to pour out his deepest floods of his love say to the flood of his love to stop in the middle of our dried up gorges he will not obey you he's going to uproot all of our dried up dead trees he's into pruning and love is not even love unless it is given away we have to realize as soon as we have any uh, um, conditions over our love it is no longer divine at all it immediately goes away so in this hour of his love's greatest power it's time to realize more than ever that people are going to um, change when we think we're going to go down with the boat for the last time but we don't have to wait until it gets that bad now is the time for the preparation of the Lord's peace and woe unto all those standing and not letting this word go out by not liking on purpose these words of his preparation of his most perfect peace for the Lord says in Malachi 2 in preparation of his kingdom age end time word coming forth in Malachi 3 he says for all of you not embracing Daniel's channel I shall take the shit diarrhea crap dung pie from your feasts, Malachi 2, and I will rub it in the faces of all Pharisees, all vipers of snakes of religion that only want something that tickles their own uh, twisted false versions of what religion should be. And in this hour, it's time to realize that uh, Christianity stole all the Hebrew books and then they declared we are Israel and all prophecy is for us. It was always alive from hell. In these latter days, God has given his word unto Israel and they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. And in these days, he is now the Lord God of all Israel and all families of Israel in the latter days, Jeremiah 31, 1. And in these days they are Chrislam, that is their new name, in accordance with Isaiah 62, 2, that was foretold to be appointed in the latter days. And if God had not done that, his book would have been nothing but toilet paper and he would have been a liar. But God keeps his promises of yea and amen. And so in this hour, we need to realize that we will all benefit unto overflowing if we will begin to devotionally uh, view the one who has both stillness in his eyes and who has created a, a state of knowledge and vision within us if we will open up the eyes of our heart to see that which is ahead and in this hour, if we will believe God's word, we will be able to shine as the stars. And no longer will we simply be looking through a glass darkly any longer. So it's time for change. And I am the messenger of his adoration from the north, as Isaiah 41 foretold. So it's time for the dove's devotion. The dove of love is the flying scroll of Zechariah 5. It is the everlasting gospel, uh, Revelation 14, which has been literal. Uh, the end time revelator, line by line, Isaiah 28, precept by precept, would come forth as a destroying storm with 
uh, to pull down all distortionalities of love so that we can finally see that there never has been any love at all if people's love have strings attached and they are the puppet masters of their love trying to get people to fit into their boxes and the same box that they have put God falsely into creating a false God the Christians have a false God who is a respecter of men and a God of favoritism. That is a sin according to the word of God. Therefore, they have the sinner God, the sinner Jesus, whose name people will not bow down to, whose tongue will not confess. They shall bow down to his secret name of Mark 4. His name is love. That is his name that John the Beloved gave unto him 2,000 years ago. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess love who the Lord is. But the name of Jesus only came forth in the 18th century. Uh, the name of a, a false Jesus who had religion put condemnation into his mouth when none was there. So it's time he said that all of our sin is forgiven, all blasphemies, even against him. It's time to, to not experience blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the only thing that can cause us to be cast out of here into the outer darkness of lovelessness. For if we are cast out, then that is where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But the truest truth is Christ has said all sin would be forgiven us, all of our wretchedness, as he tosses it into the forgetfulness of his forgiveness. Look therefore unto the sapphire sea, and off of this latter day mountain shall the Lord reverse his curse and remove, as Isaiah 25 says, remove the veil that has covered all the nations, uh, so that all people think that they're loving people when most have no love at all, because all of their love is on and off kind of love, which is the shallowest kind of conditional love that you could have. Uh, people, Jesus said that we must be as little children or we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It means with our love actually being divine, uh, loving for no other reason than love, for love only desires to love more of uh, himself. And so in this hour, it's time to realize that everyone who has the false Jesus of Christianity, if you're a Christian, he likes you best. And if you don't uh, believe your way, then he hates you ever more. And he casts you out into the uh, fires of uh, torture. And uh, he is a, a masochistic, sadist God. People, wake up. This is not what the word says. The word says, I am your God. You are my people. I am the Lord God of all mankind and the good shepherd of all the flocks of man. You don't have that God. You have a false God who has condemnation over everyone that doesn't believe like you. It's having nothing to do with love. This is the mystery of God over in your hearing because the first was last and the last was first. And so in this hour, uh, listen very closely, all ye lovers of our desire of the nations. The simple shall surely inherit folly, but the wise shall be crowned with the real exciting knowledge that it only takes just a, a little spark of devotion in order to get a real mighty spiritual burning like a huge inferno of God's most abundant love. And because of such apparent truth, no more should the least of uh, our beloved's people spend their years sighing over valleys of tears. He is arising to destroy all the gross darkness with healing in his wings for us, as Isaiah 60 foretold. And know that death shall now become the funeral of all of our sorrows once and for all if we will but believe his everlasting word from his everlasting covenant of his everlasting gospel. And uh, so shall it be that it will never, his, his devotion will never be torn down come uh, the oppression of hell or the horrors of high waters 
Surely a maggot cannot praise you, O Lord God Almighty, nor can a grave worm recount your loving kindness. For you, O Lord God, are the Lord God whose mercy shall endure forever. But the living can praise you. Even those stumbling can laud over your love in revealing your unconditional charity unto them. And by your righteousness, you now enlighten those who you have chosen so their falsehoods might fall away in these days of Elijah, the days of the apocalypse, of the uh, reversal of false understanding. For in your hand alone is the soul of every living human and the breath of all flesh that you have given. So it's time for a plea to go out amongst the lands for the Lord's hand to stay upon us. And with one voice, with one heart, even as a prayer, we must humble ourselves upon the rock or the rock will fall upon us. So let us of one accord say unto the Lord with one voice, with one goal, uh, the devotion of love to love, that we learn the ways of war no more. So deal with us, O Heavenly Father, according to your goodness, according to your great mercy, and according to your many righteous deeds. And praise that Almighty One without ceasing, that his mighty Messiah shall heed the voices of all those loving him for not depriving them of his most abundant loving kindness. So blessed be our most high Lord of heaven who executes mighty miracles while crowning his obedient followers with his loving kindness and his everlasting mercy. Truly, truly, if we will not praise him, will be in deep duty. And so my soul therefore praises his name of love, the name above all other names. It was never Jesus. People, when they called him for dinner, it was Yeshua, Yeshua, and it stayed Yeshua up until the 18th century when uh, Yeshua was translated from Hebrew into Jehovah and uh, Jesus. Uh, instead of Yahweh and, Yah and Yeshua, it became Jehovah and Jesus. So that has never been the name to which all will bow. It is his name of love. And so in this hour of love's greatest power, it's time to sing praises for his loving ways and to proclaim his thankfulness uh, and his faithfulness. And of his praise, we need to acknowledge that he is our beneficent one and to whom there is no end possible. And um, I used to be a lamentful soul uh, walking on, under condemnation. Uh, but you know, the Lord has healed my heart. I've even been able to quit drinking. And uh, I was near death, was I, for my sins. And my iniquities had sold me over to the grave. But he who is my love, our love of the ages, uh, he saved me in spite of myself having been so unfaithful to his causes. And when I remember his incredible might of love, my heart is brave. And upon his endless mercies, I must always lean. And so it's time uh, to forgive now all of his, of all of his people's sin. And that is why it is foretold upon this latter day mountain overflowing with spiritual food, as Isaiah 25 says, upon this Latter-day Mountain of 11,000 videos, the greatest in YouTube history amount, it is time to beat our sword into the sickles to learn the ways of war no more as we beat our sword of conditional love into the sickle of his unconditional love. How could we worship him in spirit and truth as a God of unconditional love if we all have conditions to our own love? It's never made any sense, and we have nothing but desolate heritages, as Isaiah 49, 8 foretold. So it's time to realize that secretly are the righteous chastened, uh, lest the sinner rejoice over them. 
And it's time to realize more than ever, it's never been about us. It's been about him, what he's done for us, lest any man boast. For the truest truth is he is our beloved, our blessed, and the adored. And his light of love lives within us. And know that our hope of glory will connect us as a beloved son and his chastisement is like that of the firstborn to the Lord. And that wonderful one spares not his chosen ones. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. And he has blotted out our errors by way of his forgiveness as it has been declared by his Elijah task latter-day Daniel who I am and in this hour he will transform our blackest sins into the image of his own snow white sinlessness because he has faith and he sees none of us as we are but as we will be the second we enter glory we are as sinless as the day that we were born and so it is time to realize more than ever that the life of all those walking down his holy road of unconditional love that leads to heaven uh, shall be forever. But sinners upon the road of conditional love, if we let our love die right out and commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, we will be taken away unto destruction and our memorial would be no more found. But for those enlightened in the ways of the truthfulness of his love, always having been divine. And now I will be right back. The great alarm has sounded. This vision has been written plainly on the tablet so all those who readeth it may run. And I have been reading all of my stuff because I am a writer. And this is what was foretold for the latter days. So people, if, if I am not acknowledged as bringing fulfillment to much Bible prophecy, according to Bible prophecy, this earth will end up being destroyed because of our disunity. So as you turn the channel on me again and again, if I am right about everything I'm saying, and I am, you guys are going to be in a shitload of trouble, and many of you will die much younger than you would have if, if this word was passed out amongst the nations. People are not obedient at all unto the voice of love, and uh, I have proved this again and again. Uh, I realize now more than ever why the Lord hated uh, religious people. Uh, vipers and snakes because uh, they are disobedient, they are critical, they are judgmental, they have uh, uh, been totally brainwashed. It's their way or no way, it's a highway, and they are not reasonable. They are uh, have unclean spirits of, of disobedience within them. And so it's time to realize that uh, all people need to repent because our Lord alone is our living praise. And in him should we all hope every day, all day long. And uh, so it's time to rightly divide the word of his salvation uh, that is now coming to all dedicated souls. That is a big little word, word all. People, he's the God of all flesh, Jeremiah 32, 27. The Lord God of all the flocks of men, John 10. All nations have become the Lord, uh, Revelation 10, 7. All means all. All is inclusive. And the bottom line is Christianity never was Israel. They stole the covenant from Israel. And uh, they did the same thing that... Um, Jacob did when he stole Esau's blessing from his blind father Isaac and because early Christians said we are Israel and the prophecy is all for us and they created a distortionality and they erased that the Lord God was the Lord God of all mankind they became 
the all mankind, everything got twisted all to hell. There was never bad intent. If people were just ignorant about love and there has never been a, a darker gross darkness than the ignorance of love and so it is time to realize that blessed are those of the Lord's faithful who will greedily crack open uh, these videos of mine preaching the word of the restoration of Acts 321 Please read Acts 3.21 because Moses foretold in Deuteronomy 18.18 18, that one like him would come, a writer and a kingdom age covenant giver, and one who would read uh, lead another great exodus. It is the falling away predicted in Thessalonians. The wheat and the tares cannot grow together any longer. I command all the wheat who are people of love, it is time to leave religion that will not receive his message of Malachi 3.1, which is his open word, unadulterated, given correctly his covenant to all mankind. He was smart now, you know. He knew exactly who he was giving his little covenant to in the word of God. He was now not a clown. God knew that someday that Israel would inherit all mankind in the days of Hebrews 8 when he gives his covenant to all mankind. Isaiah 54, 3 has fully manifested and we don't need to crown, uh, clown around no more. So we greedily got to crack open these videos if you're going to walk with the spirit of truth as greedily as a safe cracker can crack open uh, a safe with treasure inside. For at this channel, people, I have treasure of the Lord's excellence here because he is the priceless pearl of great reward. I have that excellence of treasure, but you gotta leave the safety of your shore and you gotta go out to the deep. That is where he is deep, calls unto deep. And it's gonna happen not by power, nor by my, but by the spirit of the bluebird of happiness, singing his beautiful songs of joy and placidity over you. Bring yourself the tranquility that serenity of the bliss of his love alone can bring, and he will wash you clean. And as far as the east is from the west, he has removed his uh, veil from off all people of his love as he has removed Satan for 1,000 years in accordance with Daniel 12 1 for in the days of the latter day Daniel who has embraced his destiny as Elijah Daniel 12 13 will come God's word opening again because it was only closed until the time of the end Daniel 12 9 and then shall come the shattering of the power of the holy people Daniel 12, 7, because all the canons have opened in the spirit uh, and they must open for his message, Christ's message of Malachi 3, 1, which does prepare his way by his own word, unadulterated. It is written in the Bible, check and checkmate all you religious prudes. And there is no one that can invalidate God's word, not you or nobody uh, that has ever been born. And he does have that great big shit pie for all of you hard-hearted Pharisees. And if you will not obey him and start liking these channels, he's going to put that shit pie right in your own friggin' eye.